Hey everybody, Steve and Chelsea Scott with Come Follow Me. Hi you guys. Welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is do's, don'ts, and doctrine. A little bit of alliteration for you. And we're going to do 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, October the 16th through the 22nd. Thank you so much for joining us today, you guys. We had so many messages and we just have to put this out there. We are not right in Jerusalem. Now. We, we are, are not. not. We're not there and we are not going. So you don't need to worry about us. I've had so many people like, I'm so worried about you guys going. We are not going. We are postponing the trip. We are very sad. We're very sad that we cannot go, but we are more sad for what's going on over there. We're praying for the people in Israel. So unite our prayers, ours and yours together. This is all we can do for now, but we are so grateful for the concern and the love, you guys. Thank you. You know, I think of a talk that was given by, uh, I think it was President Hinckley that said, denounce war and proclaim peace, mm -hmm. truthfully and really pray for people. And um, my shout out today really is to all those people that I was super excited to be with. I get a little bit like, whew. Um, like, so to all of you, um, like to the Wilsons, to the Smiths, um, to Melanie, um, just to all of you, like the still was, <laughs> I, Steve and Susan, Susan um, Donna, Donna, Don and Rod, like we love you guys. All of you. I can't even name all forty of you right this minute, <laughs> but I'm grateful for you. We look forward to doing something in the future. And I don't know what that is, but we isn't funny. Like last week, our lesson was trust the process, and then the next day, um, I my bone exploded <laughs> with things and. Uh, so we're gonna trust it. We're grateful for, and I, I am grateful for all of you who sent me messages. Um, so here's your fist bump. Oh, and your high five. Ba bam. But mostly this. Lots Truthfully. Hearts, lots. Forty million hearts. <laughs> so let's get our let's get ourselves together and continue, shall we? Breathe. Let's let's look at, at at today's lesson as an opportunity for us to have an eternal perspective, think celestial, move forward, trust the process, trust the process, recognize all the things that are good. And all the do's, don'ts, and doctrines. Yes. Let's grab your scriptures, your journals, and your scripture markers. It's time for us to connect up. We are going to talk about Thessalonians today. And some of you guys will be like, Thessalonians? Okay, it's not, I used to think it was Thessalonians when I, when I was younger. I was so like, the I. book of Thessalonians? I'm like, thistles? I, it's not. It's Thessalonians from Thessalonica, of course. I mean, you all knew that. But... In Paul's writings to the Thessalonians, we get to study two chapters. Now, what do you do when things are like, there's like a lot to cover in two books of scripture? You do the same thing we've taught you before. You understand, identify, apply, you swim, snorkel, scuba, and you di you uh, fly, dip, and dive. Like that's what we're gonna do. And you get the doctrine that you really need, the principles, apply them to you, what you need personally. Okay, does that make sense? How many of you guys just went, Whoosh. Okay, so take a, take a little bit of a breather. Just okay. Don't eat it all. Don't eat it all. Just, just nourish yourself. Now we know Paul. We've known him. We've known a lot of his writings so far. And if I was to just take a pause for a minute and be like, what do you think Paul is going to teach the people in Thessalonica? What do you think? Consider all the other writings that he's done. Do you think that there will be very similar things? Yes, yes, there will be. So, but we've, we've kind of broken it down into three categories. The do's that Paul tells, the don'ts that he says, and the doctrine that he teaches. <coughs> Excuse me. So I like, I don't really like the word don't as much as avoid. I don't know why. It just rhymes. It's a little <laughs> bit of alliteration. So, so like, you can't be like, do avoid, avoid doctrine. Because then it says like, do avoid doctrine. And that wouldn't go well, would it? No. The flow is off. It would the be The energy would be different. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> I figured it out. That was good. Good. That was yeah, good. Was you good. didn't even do good? Yeah. You guys. I really put about. it into proper content. <laughs> the text the energy. I think. The vibe. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what I'll use next time. Okay, grab your scriptures. Let's do this, shall we? Yeah. What do you find? In Paul's writings to the Thessalonians, what are some of the do's that you were like, oh, I love it. So good. Well, let's start here. Let's go to let's go to the end. Let's go to Th Thessalonians chapter two or chapter five. Second Thessalonians, chapter five. 
Okay. There's no chapter five, Chelsea. It's in First Thessalonians, though. <laughs> I'll change it. That was not me. I'm not that as think as you dumb I am. I got this. We got All right. Done. Mm -hmm. Church is true. Five, one through ten. So I'm gonna read this. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For ye yourselves. Where are you? No, perfectly. One. Okay. I was like, no, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Are you okay? Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. No, okay. perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as prevail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. Ye are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let, not us, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So it's like, pull some words out of here, guys. What are we supposed to be doing? For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken at the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Isn't this good? So there's a lot of do's in here. And there are don'ts in here, too. There's a few don'ts. There's a few, but there's... And few. there's some doctrine. And there's some doctrine. Okay, so what are the do's? Okay, let's go back to this. It does say I can stay up late. Because it says, let us not sleep. Watch. Watch is a good word. How many of you guys are night owls? Is there anyone here that's like night owls and you're like... You like get all Who's your... Who's the... Where's the morning people? We're the more. What do we like better? Put it in the comment section. Morning people or night people? What do we like better? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm a mad scientist I'm like that night. annoying person when you... I'm like, hello, good morning. And I'll be like, say these really weird phrases to my kids in the morning. And they're like, mom, stop it. Mwah. But I do love the mornings. I okay, get so up early. I love them. In all seriousness, what are some of the do's? <laughs> okay. Um, that was a random thought. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so it's asking you to be watchful, right? Watch. Mm -hmm. um, also, put on the breastplate of faith and love. Mm. It does remind you of Ephesians in, the, in your chapter. And inside. I'm not going to tell them all, because they, they, they can read this and oh. write it for themselves. But when yeah, you're looking for the do's, like this is the part. I love when... Pre so I'm doing something currently in my own personal study. I made a goal to listen to President Nelson's talk, Think Celestial, every day for 30 days. That's, that's what I've done. I've got four days down now that I've done that. Like boom, 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 boom. And every time I listen to it, I'm like, oh, there's so more, good. there's more. <laughs> and the reason I did that is because President Nelson goes, like if I had a 99 year old sitting next to me, I'm like, can you please help me mentor me, help me just teach me more. What is so wise, right? Like, oh. he's like, don't, I'd rather as people ask me, what do I, what have I learned? Instead of like, how did you get to be 99? We want to be that 99. So Paul is this in the same context for me where I look at Paul and I go, I spent so many years with Paul. I love Paul, but I, and now I get to look at Paul and go, okay, Paul, teach Pauly me. boy, Pauly D, <laughs> teach me. Okay. I love, I just, <laughs> teach me. Yeah. I, I don't know if I should give Paul a nickname. Maybe when we get to the second, the <laughs> next side, he'd be like, Steve, you know my name. And I'll be like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, some of the things that I loved in this one is like in verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but obtained salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. So this is a do to remember it and a doctrine that he teaches. When he goes, no, like this is true. Look what I did over here. I still put Second Thessalonians and it's supposed to be first. But that is a doctrine that he's super clear on. It's like, no, recognize where salvation comes. Do remember this. Mm. And obtain it. That's a big word too. Obtain it. Like, bring it in. Receive it. Be worthy of it. You know? Yes. Allow it. So let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Okay. This one's good. Um, and I might be, let's go. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation 
through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. I'm going to keep going. Wherefore, he called you by our gospel to obtain of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the doctrines, not tradition, doctrines, which ye have been taught, whether by word or epistle. In other words, whether we told you or we wrote it down. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. I love these verses. Because in this, he's, he's A, he says, we give thanks, you give thanks. Um, but that chosen you to salvation through sanctification. What do you love about that? <laughs> well, I always like to just click on different words as I'm reading and then dig more to what sanctification means in different scriptures that link to sync. Do you know how you can just like go all over? You can just spend hours and hours doing this. But what I loved is it brought me into some scriptures in um, the Book of Mormon. It was talking about becoming sanctified through the Savior, Jesus Christ. And then I started going to like, what is it that keeps us from becoming sanctified? And then I talked about that in the Book of Mormon. Pride, you know? Pride versus choosing to become sanctified. So pride is different for everyone but they're natural man patterns that we struggle with. I would say when I listened to um, President Nelson's talk, you know, and he talked about things that become our guide, addictions to like food, debt, pornography, um, anything that can, can, will then become our God. Social media. Pride can become oh. our God. Mm -hmm. And that's a don't. Paul's like pretty clear, like let's avoid that. So just, Things that are getting in the way of your connection with the Savior. Yeah, could be any, anything. So we go to another do? Yeah, I like the do's. Do, 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 do. Let's go to back to chapter 5, can we? Uh, that is a good song. Yeah. Let's go chapter 5 again. I want to go to verse 15 through 22 because that was my favorite. And I even got it wrong again. Looking in sec guys, second Thessalonians. Guys, I... It's okay. You're not perfect. We know you're That's not. That's funny. I had a friend. Okay. I had a friend describe it this way. He's like, sometimes my mind just gets saturated with so many different things that it's hard to like concentrate. If you've known me long enough, you'd be like, yeah, that describes Steve sometimes. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> <It's a world. laughs> okay. But actually, you're doing a lot better. So just saying. I always told my, I always told my seminary kids, I'm like, I'm not as think as you dumb I am, and they'd be like, what? Okay, here we go. First Thess Thessalonians chapter five, verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all. That's 100% appearance of evil. There's some do's and don'ts. There's, I mean, keep going. Not now, but later. Keep reading this because there's lots more that you can add. Um, but I just want to share a little story because I got a message from a sister. And I think maybe other people have also... Um, not concerns, but they've had some interesting thoughts about what the prophet said specifically in his talk. Okay. Okay. So he mentioned, I gotta get exactly. Um, in President Nelson's talk, do you have it memorized since think, you? No, thinking celestial, he, he did talk about avoiding certain things and people who oh. teach or like, here's the quote. You got it? I found it now. Okay, it says, he said, never take counsel from those who not do not believe. Okay. And she struggled with this. And there are some other people too. Um, not necessarily that they don't believe in the prophet or his words, but just their family, even some of their family members um, were very upset um, that have left the church or different things like that. Like, what is, what is, ex what is he trying to say here? You know? And so as I was reading through 
the scripture block this week. I'm like, hello. I had some downloads as I was reading. As I was reading these words from Paul, I could hear the prophet, the, the mantle, the clarity, the wisdom that was coming from Paul that came also from the prophet, President Nelson, and I just thought that was so amazing. And so that's what he said. So I sent her this, a couple of the scriptures that had really hit me. So I'll, I'll just give them to you too. Um, Romans 16, 17 through 19. So if you struggled at all with that comment or that, that part of his talk, go to Romans 16, 17 through 19, or 2 Thessalonians 3, 6 through 7, and 14 through 15. And I was so grateful that I could go through this and be given this this understanding. So what you were just saying is like there's a discerning that has to happen, right? We're keeping away from evil, not that those that we love that are struggling are evil, but we have to not be judging and um, keeping people away from us. That's not what we're doing. We're loving them, and but we're also discerning. Paul taught the Thessalonians like he was teaching them about doctrine that led into the second coming of Jesus Christ. Like behaviors, doctrines, do's and don'ts that would lead to the to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Like being prepared. And the Thessalonians took it in a way that they were like, oh my goodness, he's coming next week. And in essence started eating all the food storage. And um, and Paul, Paul stops and goes, hold on. Like you need to be discerning things right now. And let's let's jump, let's jump over here. Like, what doctrine did Paul teach or clarify? He taught the doctrine in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. He taught them about thinking celestial, but he taught them a doctrine that is really clear. He said, Now we beseech you, in other words, I, I'm telling you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us is that the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, guys, I want you to calm down. If you received word from us, letter from us, um, or any that the day of Christ is immediately at hand. Okay, so just calm, like breathe That's for a That's a miscommunication. Okay? Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there cometh falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. But if you look in the footnote, it says, for there shall come a falling away first. And in the footnotes, you will read that that means a, an apostasy. So Paul teaches that before Christ comes again, there will be an apostasy and therefore a need for a restoration and a gathering. Paul's teachings do not are not contrary to the writings of the Old Testament where we talked about a gathering of Israel and a gathering and a second coming and an apostasy. And this all teaches, it all clarifies together that doctrine. We cannot skip Thessalonians and, and not talk about an apostasy. Okay? Mm -hmm. Why? Because there is a falling away from truth. An apostasy is a falling away from truth. And I want to just teach you something about like our intentions, like Paul teaching the Thessalonians about like, what are you lacking? Like, what's your focus? Where are you going? Who do you believe in? Because Christ is coming again. And they're like, yes, he is. I met um, with the owner of a multi-billion dollar company. I sat down and had dinner. And in that moment, I had lots of questions. And one of the questions I asked was, now this, this, this owner is a member of our faith, okay? So they, we have the same faith. I know you're watching, by the way. Hello, I love you. Um, and I had a conversation and I asked, what is your why? Why are you doing all of this? Your company, all over the world, so many millions of people. What is your why that, I mean, you can't say it on a stage, you can't say it like in public print, Like, but what is your why? And they said, it's to prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I was like, wow. It wasn't like money. It wasn't to hit the next figure. It wasn't to hit, like, it was the second coming of Jesus Christ. You see, when, when we're in alignment with the doctrine of Jesus Christ and our testimonies are filled with faith, like, I'm passionate about this one, there is a, there is a, a push from the side to 
to fall into an, apost an apostasy or like to fall away just a little bit from truth, just, just, just gradual decline. There's like just the clawing at the wall, the knocking on the door. And so Chelsea and I read this and we were like, Paul's teaching them like, what do you lack? Like what lack I yet? Remember that talk, What Lack I Yet by Elder Larry Lawrence of the 70 years ago? It was so good. But Paul's teaching like, what are you lacking? Come to You're Jesus Christ. Yep. Avoid apostasy. Avoid pride. But Jesus Christ is not going to come again until there is a, a threshing of apostasy, which will lead to a restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a blessing. And I think about discernment again. I think about... Okay, so I have another friend that just that sent me a message. Her heart is like she she married someone who was a convert. Um, her husband has chosen to leave the church and to get remove his records, um, his name from the records of the church. And this has been a really heart wrenching experience for her. And so we've been communicating back and forth. Um, but I just think about her faith. You know, and I think about like how hard that would be, what a challenge that would be. And I just thought like just how beautiful her soul is. And this is going to continue happening. Like th these challenges are going to keep coming and it's going to really weed out those who are going to hold on strong. Like I was, we were talking to the kids about our, we we're doing family home evening about like, the, the winds, right? Those winds are coming. What do the winds do? You know, when you are anchored in Christ, what does the wind do? It strengthens and deepens those roots. Nothing. Either you are immovable, right? And so all this beautiful, all these teachings that Paul is, is sharing with us, I love it that he's sharing about the apostasy. Like that is very important doctrine which leads to the restoration of the gospel and Joseph Smith and the first vision. And I was just thinking about like that discernment again, like the feeling, the feeling, you know, it's, it's that, that, how do you describe the feeling? Like for myself, it feels, um, it connects me. It helps me to feel peace, all the gifts of the spirit then I know that it's the Spirit talking to me and directing me. So we really have to be clear and be able to discern truth. Do you get it now? Are you kind of gathering a little bit what Thessalonians is about? Okay. Can we touch on the don't that I think is a good one? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is in fact, I hope it's Second Thessalonians. Okay? <laughs> Chapter 3, verse 1 to 13. Mm -hmm. But I want to... I wanna <laughs> There, um, I don't want to go 1 through 13 totally. Um, well, it was, goes along with what you taught, so let's do it. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as is with you, that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, um, for all men have not faith. Um, but the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. It's just what we're talking about. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that you both do and will do the things which we have commanded you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting of Christ. Now, we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received from us, which is what you just talked about. For we ourselves know how we ought to follow for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have, have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Now let's go verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Okay, this is the phrase. And he says, Now, them that are such, we command and exhort in our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. You can be busy, but listen how he clarifies. But ye, but ye brethren, be not weary in well doing. There is a difference between don't, like, don't be a busybody, but do 
um, be weary in well doing. There's a difference. Do not what? It says, do not be weary, so oh, yeah, we yeah. should be. Oh, yeah, be yeah. weary in well-doing. Okay. Okay. You, like, you can lay your head down at the end of the night being like, whew, I was doing a lot of good today. But like, it's like the Mary and Martha moment, right? You can choose the better part. And being a busybody is not that moment. And I think it's, again, those roots, that, that connection, the depth, like the focus, right? All those things need to be in alignment, the connection to the Lord, the Spirit, all the things. Sometimes when I'm, as I'm working in the temple, I notice some people who come in very busy bodied. Like they're very busy, like their minds are other places and they're like, <laughs> and they're in there to like, hurry, 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 hurry. And I'm like, I just want to be like, breathe, breathe. just breathe. This is the time to <sighs> feel the spirit. You can. It's about Jesus. And uh, it's about that connection and I also had this really cool revelation that it's about working with him like we literally when we get into the, the temple we work together with Christ together Israel like we are alongside him right beside him it's so awesome it's so beautiful now, it would not be just if we walked away without Chelsea somehow reading some talk from a general conference. Oh. It just wouldn't. Well, we didn't, we didn't talk about it yet. So the next, we'll just go here quick. Yeah. Because we're going to talk about then, they're going to talk about preparing. We talked about it, but being watchful, preparing for the Christ, the Savior's return, right? Yes. And the purpose of our life is to do good, help others, you know, be like the Savior. But the most important thing we can do be doing, as Elder Christopherson said in his talk, preparing for the Lord's return, April 2019, is to gather Israel. That is the most important thing that we can be doing. And how much the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is focused on that, and we are passionate about it, and we are doing the work preparing ourselves and helping our communities and our families and those around us and helping those on both sides of the veil. I love that. So you were sharing, I, I want to share this quick, but Steve was doing initiatories. You want to tell that story? That was so good. Well, I was, uh, I took some names to, I was working in the temple and I was done my shift and, and I had names, like I brought some names for, to do some initiatory work and, um, and, and for those of you who don't know, that's just like the beginning stages of receiving the blessings of, of the temple. And uh, my cousin, my first cousin, also works with on the same shift as me in the temple. And um, as I went through initiatory, he was there with helping in the initiatory. And, he, and I said, these are our family names. And he said, it's, it's just so cool. That we can do this together um, and I felt it I felt it deep in uh, every one of those names and uh, see the book of Thessalonians isn't just about them there over there in Thessalonica it's about us here and what we do with that the doctrine the do's the don'ts the doctrine and how that helps prepare us for living more celestial and thinking more spiritually minded. So here are some questions for you. What lack I yet? What do you need to work on? What are those patterns, those natural land patterns? Maybe some pride is in there, mixed in there. You know, and asking that question to the Lord, what do I need to work on? And just listen and wait for that answer. And the next question is, what am I doing right? That is a powerful question. What am I doing right? And what can I do in my own way to prepare for the second coming? Because we all have a unique individual purpose and people that we're meant to serve, help, support, strengthen. And the Lord will, when you ask these questions and you ponder on them the Lord will give you the direction that you need the steps 
that you need to take towards that eternal goal that we are all on. Let's link arms, guys. Let's do this together. I love it. My friends, we love you. We're so grateful for you. We keep encouraging you. Keep reading your scriptures. <laughs> keep doing Come Follow Me. You're doing great things. Don't give up. We're almost at the end of the New Testament, my friends. And Paul has more to teach us. Does he not? I think the word of the week. What should the word of the week be this week? Do. Do. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's a good one. That's a good one. I know. Now all of you guys are going like... <laughs> Put that in the comment section down below. Tell us where you're from. Tell us what you learned. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to like. And don't forget to follow us as we do come follow me. We love you. Thank you for joining us today. Say it. Love you, bye. Ah, love you, bye. <laughs>